Jesus' name, welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And my friends, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What a beautiful way to come together in this way on Easter Sunday morning as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's an awesome opportunity for us to worship in person or virtually amongst each and every one of you as Christians around the world recognize that Jesus fulfilled scripture and Jesus fulfilled his promise to rise again on the third day and be with us. It is. We've had a busy week, but that doesn't mean we slow down being it's Easter. No, we continue to move forward. We have some events that are coming up here now in April. One of the things that we want to recognize is on April 21st, on that Sunday, is Youth Sunday. And so we're going to be celebrating um, our worship service with our young people participating in our service that day. And it would be neat because not only will they be leading worship, but we're hoping to incorporate some of our children in the music um, that will take place as well. And recognizing that all children of God come together for worship and learning. And what a better way than to incorporate them in that way. Exactly. And you say all children of God, which reminds me that we have a new member Sunday coming up. And uh, we want to invite or extend the invite to those of you that, that have, may have been worshiping with us or might be interested in, in joining this faith community. And what day was that? So it's going to be Friday, April 12th at the Parsonage. We're going to have a new member event at 630. And it's an opportunity for us to get to know one another, meet one another. Church leaders are coming together. New member families are coming together. And it would just be a wonderful opportunity for us to gather in that way if you're available. But also on April 14th, that following Sunday, uh, we will have New Member Sunday where we acknowledge those who have joined um, and just embrace them in this body of Christ here at Trinity as we acknowledge that this is an opportunity for them to share their voice in shaping the future mission and ministries of our church. So my friends, as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty? And so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole world with holy thunder, and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be saved Son and daughter, the King of glory, the King of King of Who rules the nation with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is a This is unfailing love That you would take your place You would bear the cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free I sing for all that you've done for me. 
I invite you now into our time of confession and forgiveness. God, we hear your invitation to us. Come to me, you who are weary and heavy burdened, I will give you rest. We acknowledge our soul's need for rest and quiet nourishment. We lay down our burdens. We acknowledge our soul's need of connection with you. We confess our tendency to overlook rest as necessary part of soul and self-care. We confess our pride in thinking our work is so important that we may not set it down. We confess our readiness to believe that what we do determines our worth. We confess our obsession with productivity, results, measurable progress. We confess our tendency to forget that it is in you that we live and move and have our being and that your love is better than life. We ask now for body, mind, spirit, whole person nourishment. For rest and resurrection, for new life, for healing and consolation of our souls. We ask for help in managing our time and activities so that our infillings keep up with our outpourings. Where we have overspent ourselves, refresh us. Where we have misplaced our priorities, rearrange us. Where we have said yes when we should have said no, remind us. We thank you for meaningful work, for blessings and burdens. We thank you for rest. May we become present to our great need for daily bread, the presence of Christ in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news, the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own works, but through Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. Rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome to our Easter children's message. And it's titled The Empty Tomb. It's an opportunity for us to figure out what happened on Easter Sunday morning so many years ago. The Empty Tomb. It was early in the morning on the third day after Jesus died. The sky was pink and red with the first light of the sun. The women didn't notice the sky. They hurried to the cave that contained Jesus' body. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, led the way. Two others, Salome and Joanna, carried the spices to rub on the body of Jesus. They had a job to do. When the tomb of Jesus came into sight, they froze. Uh-oh. They had forgotten about the huge stone that sealed the opening to the cave. How would they move it? The women kept going to the cave anyway. As they came closer, the woman could see that the stone had already been rolled away. They peeked inside. Oh, it was dark in there. Brr, it was cold in there. Drip drop, it was damp in there. What? It was empty in there. Jesus was gone. An angel appeared in sparkling white clothes. The glow from the angel brightened even the darkest corners of the cave. The women shielded their eyes from the blinding light. Don't be afraid, the angel said. Jesus isn't here. This is a place for the dead. Jesus is alive. Hurry, the angel said. Go tell the disciples. The women did not delay. They ran to tell Jesus' friends what they had seen and heard. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Can you imagine what it was like that morning when the women went to the tomb expecting to find the body of Jesus and it wasn't there? And then to be told that Jesus is not dead and that he is alive. That is exciting news and I can't imagine what it was like for them that morning. Because I think before they got to that tomb, those days leading up to that, they were scared. They were fearful. Yeah. They had lost hope. They weren't sure what was going on. They were grieving the loss of Jesus. Exactly. And then all of a sudden, their, ho their fears and their worries evaporated and drifted away as they recognized that Jesus fulfilled Jesus' promise 
and was risen on the third day as he promised. Exactly, exactly. So my friends, as, as we celebrate this Easter Sunday, let us not forget the excitement that those women first experienced that morning. Maybe you can embrace that and go out and say, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Our first reading for this Sunday of Easter is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. And it reads like this. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firm to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they. So we proclaimed, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is coming from Acts 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God had anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead, he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. God. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early on, the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, 
They saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, we have the opportunity to reflect on the following question. What does Jesus' resurrection from the dead mean for us and the world? And as we journey together towards answering this question, I invite you to listen to a story about a tragedy that occurred this very week, as reported by the Wall Street Journal and USA Today. At 12.39 a.m. in the early morning hours on Tuesday, March 26th, a crew of 21 people with two pilots departed the port of Baltimore on a ship called the Dali. The cargo transport loaded with 4,700 containers began its trip with two tugboats assisting the Dali on its way out until it reached the speed of nine miles per hour. Then it was set free per standard protocol for leaving such a port. Nothing out of the ordinary for these 23 souls traveling at sea for the next four weeks on their journey to Sri Lanka. 1.26 a.m., The pilot called for tugboats to return because the power of their ship went off and on, off and on, and they completely lost their ability to steer. I can't imagine how frightening that must have been for the pilot of the ship and their other crew members seeing these lights flicker on and off, power on and off, not being able to steer and not knowing what the ship could run into as they journeyed down this river towards the bridge. At 1.27 a.m., the pilot gave orders to drop the port anchor and work to guide the ship away from the Francis Scott Key Bridge. While at the same time, a call went out to two police patrol units on either side of the bridge to close traffic from entering, which the ship pilot initiated. At 1.29 a.m., the ship crashed into the bridge. Despite any efforts tied to calling other tugboats back to help stop the ship, despite putting the anchor down and dragging across the bottom of the river, despite trying to do everything they can and warning others, there was nothing that could be done at that moment as the ship continued uncontrolled into the bridge. As you see pictured, here. You can imagine there were loud noises of steel tangling in the bridge collapsing as the ship came to an abrupt halt. One crew member shared that at that time they saw vehicles in the water and prayed that no one was inside. 
I can imagine, please, 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 nobody be in any of these construction vehicles that were flung off the bridge into the water. Please, nobody be in them because we don't want anyone to be killed as a result of this accident. Now, the effort of the ship pilot saved many lives, ensuring more trucks and cars didn't enter the bridge during the moments before the wreck However, two road construction workers who were on the bridge were identified as killed, and four are still missing, but all are presumed dead. Many other ships going into and out of the port of Baltimore are still stuck on either side of the collapsed bridge, including out at sea, and the 23 people aboard the Dali remain in place while an investigation is underway by the National Transportation Safety Board. Now, the horrific tragedy that took place this week involving the shipwreck into the bridge in Maryland is a reminder that tragedy and death can be experienced both near and far away. Tragedy and death can happen within a community or among an individual. And tragedy and death can be connected to a person's health, relationships, unfortunate events, or many other things that can happen. However, my friends, because of Jesus' resurrection from the dead on Easter Sunday, after his death on the cross, tragedies and death no longer have the final say. I say again, through our faith in Jesus and his resurrection from the dead on Easter Sunday after his death on the cross, tragedies and death no longer have the final say. And the reality is, if we're being honest with ourselves, tragedies and death will continue to incur in the world and our lives. As Jesus never promised that we wouldn't experience pain, suffering, tragedy, or death. However, Jesus' resurrection promise, like all of God's promises, is always fulfilled no matter what. And through our faith alone in Jesus and his resurrection promise to each of us, we can experience the following as the theologian Migliori writes. We can experience a God that is faithful God of Israel, who alone can open graves and bring the dead to life, raise the crucified Jesus, and will one day raise again all those who have died because of their faith in Jesus, so that they may join Jesus in a resurrection like his and have eternal life with Christ in heaven. Through our faith alone in Jesus and his resurrection promise to each of us, we can also experience the triumph of God over all injustice and violence. The events that give victims of tragedy and death a new and lasting hope. Through our faith alone in Jesus and his resurrection promise to each of us, we can also experience New life in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit who reaches into our hearts and minds as God's love has been poured into us. And through the Holy Spirit, the living, resurrected Christ gives us a mission of proclamation and service to others. One example of Jesus' resurrection promise connected to be fulfilled today in the world through the Holy Spirit, empowering a mission of proclamation and service to others includes the words and deeds of chaplains at the port of Baltimore at the scene of the shipwreck of the Dali. It's shared in the following message from Bishop Goal from the Delaware, Maryland Synod this week. He stated, Many thanks to all those who have raised their prayers for the people of Baltimore. Your love and support is felt and deeply appreciated. While we are also grateful for the many who have reached out with offers to help, we are still accompanying the search and rescue teams with our fervent prayers. A gift that we share in our Delaware, Maryland Synod is a robust 
port ministry through Baltimore International Seafarers Center and supported by Seafarers International House. I've been in touch with our port chaplain, the Reverend Vitaly Goose, who reports that he and his colleagues are providing pastoral support and assessing the needs of seafarers aboard ships that are now stranded in the port of Baltimore for the foreseeable future. Lutheran Disaster Response, who have been in close contact and will help coordinate our ongoing care and support for those who grieve, those who recover, our courageous first responders and Coast Guard and our seafarer siblings. With my love and prayers, the Reverend Bill Gold, Jr., Bishop, Delaware, Maryland, Synod. My friends, no matter if death or tragedies take place in the world or in our lives, through our faith in Christ and his Easter resurrection promise, we can experience and share with others hope, comfort, peace, and strength connected to the living word of God we know as Jesus, found in scripture such as Psalm 23, titled The Divine Shepherd, which states, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with the branches we lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you are with us. We pray for the homebound, the lonely, grieving, those in treatment or are ill. We lift before you this day Charles Nettisted, Ashley Harthoon, Kathleen Bruns Doppler, Ardeen Erickson, Don Rondgren, Jim Rood, Earl Mickelson, Piper Larson, John Rogelstead, Jerry Ness, Richard Erickson, and any and all others that we name from our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us all embrace each other in Christ's reconciling peace. God's peace be with you, Pastor Eric. Peace be with you, Alan. God's peace be with each of you. At this time, let us give thanks for the offering we receive to proclaim Christ through word and deed here in Pelican Rapids, the state of Minnesota, our country, and beyond. Let us pray. Merciful God, we, we offer, offer with joy, joy and thanksgiving what, what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, my friends, as we come to the close of this worship service, as we continue to celebrate this day that Christ is risen, and he is risen indeed, hallelujah. Go with this blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your backs. May the sun shine warm upon your faces, and the snows fall gentle upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. go forth this day, may we all hold on to the promise that Jesus fulfilled this very day as we acknowledge Easter Sunday that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. See you next week. God bless.